Okay, we're back in the lab. Now, I believe it or not, guys, I recorded this whole video to show you both of us, you and I, going through the photos together, but I had some audio issues and it was a complete mess. That's cool. I just like how this is just a stripe across. But in that planned video, my, you could see my reactions to the actual film simulations. Another mistake I made is, and you guys helped me with this, is the Agfa Vista Baby film simulation. I actually ruined it. Uh, it's supposed to not be classic chrome. It's supposed to be classic negative. So those photographs, uh, like the one with the box and stuff, that were a little bit too yellow or something. It didn't. It wasn't one of Fuji X Weekly's film simulation. It was. It was my film simulation. I call it PP. Anyway, how was it shooting with the Fujifilm X-Pro3? Now, when the Fujifilm X-Pro3 was announced and I watched a bunch of reviews from other YouTubers, honestly, I gotta be honest, I wasn't super excited about this screen. I just didn't get it. I didn't understand why, why the heck would you cover one of the things we've gotten so used to using and uh, one of the best things about digital cameras is new photographers can understand the exposure triangle. What you see is what you get. You know, before you take the photograph, you already know if it's overexposed and underexposed. And I've gotten so used to using these cameras that when I use a DSLR, sometimes I'll pick up a DSLR is <laughs> I'll take a photograph and then check and it'll be so overexposed because I didn't realize that the exposure needle was incorrect. We've gotten so used to using the back of the screen that I didn't really get it when Fujifilm came out with this camera. And I played their promotional video about this camera to kind of understand where they're coming from. And it made a little bit more sense. Once I watched the promotional video, it said that they created the camera and designed it specifically to mimic the analog or film experience. Now, I haven't shot film in a while. I haven't shot film in a long time, but I remember it was a slow process, making sure your exposure needle was correct. You didn't want to waste film. That was the main thing. That's the other, that's the other benefit of shooting uh, digital is you can shoot so many frames and improve upon your photography so much faster. The analog process, although is great and slows you down, it slows you down. You don't get instant feedback. So when I watched the promotional video, I was kind of like, all right, they're trying to you know, create this analog film experience that I haven't had in a long time. So let's go with it. And I think that's the thing with this camera is, and I'm gonna give you my pros and cons overall with the experience, but I wanted to sort of like both of us be on the same page. Like what the heck was Fujifilm thinking? And are you gonna jump on the ride? Are you gonna go along for the ride? for the way this camera was meant to be shot. If you sign up for that, then I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. But if you're fighting with what Fujifilm's intentions were with this camera, then you might as well get um, like a Fujifilm X-T3 or X-T4 that has an LCD screen already there. Now, I will say, although I didn't get it, and even when getting the camera, I was kind of like, okay, forcing myself to shoot analog film separated me from the results that I was getting. It separated me from checking, checking, checking to make sure that everything was okay. Your, your mindset completely changes. Instead, prior to the photograph, my brain was thinking composition. It was thinking placement of the camera. Um, it was thinking angle. But there was no rush to take the picture because usually you can take a test shot and check to see exposure and what the colors you're doing. So I had to constantly think ahead to make sure everything was okay um, to, in this analog experience and then fire. And then the mystery of not knowing. And it brought me back to my film days where you took care of everything beforehand, you fired away and you moved on to the next thing without any feedback. Now there's good and bad to that. The good is it keeps you in the moment. And I think that's what Fujifilm wanted with this camera was, you know, film is becoming more popular with photographers because they want an analog experience. They wanna slow things down and they, they kinda want their results later. You wanna be stuck in the process. Again, this is not for everyone. And I feel like I had so much fun shooting this way and I know some of you probably say, you know what? 
Why don't you just take your Fuji X-T20 and put a cardboard over the and to, I understand that, but some of us need to actually be forced. I, I can understand why the screen is the other way now because we cheat. We, how many times have you said that you're not gonna look at your phone or you put it bedside and in the morning, you, you know, your New, Year, New Year's resolution is to not look at your phone when you first wake up and you're just like, well, just a little glance won't hurt. And I found that I wanted to cheat. After I shot the photograph, I want, wanted, I wanted to open up the screen. And um, it, 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 I didn't because I could, it was a pain to open up the screen. And so there's a forced analog experience, as I'll call it, as opposed to you creating one with another Fujifilm camera. I found that to be the number one pro, is this forced analog experience is a, a different way to shoot. And sometimes you need a different way to shoot to stay motivated. Like I was so excited to just think about the photography I was going to get as opposed to the photography I was getting in the moment. It was totally different. And uh, those of you that are film shooters know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and um, I was happy to have the experience. I don't think I wanna have it all the time though. The same reason I want to pick up my phone and check the news and check Twitter right away. Uh, there's that, the endorphins that are released from our brain from getting feedback. If you're, you know, I can't imagine if I was like at the Grand Canyon or somewhere or there was like some hawk flying my way and I was like, click, yeah, I'll check that later. Now, by the way, obviously you can shoot this camera like a regular, it still has the screen. So if you wanted to, you just have to kind of put up with the screen being at the bottom. And um, I mean, if you're okay with that, then the screen can just hang there and, and you can have the normal LCD experience that you always have. The other way to shoot the camera is forget about the optical viewfinder and just turn on the EVF and you can shoot, you can play back your images in here. It's like a full EVF experience. The matte black version of this camera, I love. It's just super beautiful. And I think this, arguably, this and the Fujifilm X100 series, they're like the most beautiful cameras. I'm, I'm gonna say that this one is, I don't know, I can't, there's like your children. I can't say it's more beautiful. It's more beautiful. I'm so sorry. It really is a beautiful camera. So the, the the design of the camera is just fantastic. Some of my favorite features on the design, they have these like little rubber edges. First of all, the, the camera weighs a lot. It's very like tanky. That's a word. Second, uh, these little rubberized corners on the front, there's like a nice little rubberized grip. And on the back over here on the edge, there's a nice little rubberized grip. Those two make the camera feel really nice when you're holding it. So it's so obvious. I mean, you, if you're watching this video and you're looking up videos on the X-Pro3, you're so, you have to be so into the design. With that said, I, since I like the experience of, of having the screen in the back, I am so looking at X-Pro2s now. It's so bad. I don't need an X-Pro2. I don't need it. Another bonus is you save battery life. I mean, this has the smaller battery. You know, it doesn't have the newer X Pro 3 battery. It has the smaller battery. However, you're not using the LCD so much since you're using the optical viewfinder or even the EVF. Battery life is a lot better with this camera. And third, if you're gonna, I, my opinion, if you're gonna do the analog experience, then using the film recipes from X Fuji, uh, Fuji X Weekly was awesome or using the uh, built-in film simulations to get your JPEGs. Now, some of you had awesome recommendation with how to shoot more analog. Some of you said to get a tiny, find some tiny one gigabyte cards. I don't even know, where do you find those? But one gigabyte cards to shoot your film and you only shoot one film. So on that one gigabyte card, you will only shoot Ilford plus five plus. I think that's super cool. And then what you could do is have a larger card in the second card slot that, that collects all the raw files. And what's neat is you take out that first card of film and look at those photos, especially since the Fujifilm JPEGs are so crispy and delicious. And I think these cameras should come with one gigabyte cards included. <laughs> all right, so before I talk about the cons, overall, super positive fun. I, I felt like it was in the moment enjoying photography. That's why I started this channel is because I was just work, work, work photography. 
But shooting photography for me and trying to shoot art of Newark, New Jersey, um, I, I had a great time. And that's what it is for a lot of us, to go out and just have a good time and capture images that do something for you, okay? Now, the negatives of the camera, um, I won't even talk price because uh, there's people that are in debt that buy anything they need and stay in debt. There's people who have tons of money who don't spend it at all. So price is a person to person. It is expensive, the camera, but that might not be something that holds someone back. So uh, it's not the most budget friendly camera. Let's just say that. That's one little negative. Second, the optical viewfinder was awesome using the 35 millimeter F2, but I put the 16 millimeter on there, which is wider. And I also put the 56, which has more of a the zoom. And the little box doesn't really make sense. Anything wider or more zoomy, it's the optical viewfinder doesn't really work so great. Okay, this is just like a typical old man problem, you know, but the ISOs on here are so small. ISO 800. Another con for me, a uh, couple of times my exposure comp dial was bumped up one or down two. I wish there was a, a lock on the exposure comp dial. What else is a neggy neg? Now, I don't think this camera was set up to have any kind of back button focus. I'm a back bucket, a bucket, I'm a back bucket. <laughs> I'm a back button focuser and uh, none of the dials, I mean, sorry, none of the buttons here really worked for that. What I did was I made my, um, my little dial here. I actually made this the back button focus. I'm mean, not a huge negative, but meh. This is such an EVF centric camera. And I feel like the EVF on the X, the X, um, I don't even know the names of these cameras anymore. It's the X-T3's EVF. So you have a nice rubber cup around your eye to block the sun. The EVF's magnification is a little better. So all the e although the EVF is nice here, I feel like the next one should have like the most premium. Again, that's something I said in the other video. You pay so much for this camera and it has the same sensor and a lesser EVF than some of the cameras that are cheaper. So it'd be cool if you were paying so much. I don't need it to be titanium, you know? Like, take some money from that and put it into what we really experience, which is the, a larger EVF, like the most magical five zillion dot EVF kind of thing. So overall, who is this camera for? I think if you're watching this or if you're watching a lot of videos, I think you know if the camera's for you. Anyone that's on the fence, I would say that if you really want to see your images, like if a screen in the back is important, you could still use it on this camera. Um, it's just becomes, it definitely is, it definitely on purpose is a pain to see your images on the back of the screen. Having to take that extra step to open the screen, it started to get annoying, which is why I just stayed with the analog experience. I don't think the analog experience is for me, but, um, I, I might put like, you know, masking tape on here. So is the X-Pro3 the analog experience, the forced analog experience you've been waiting for? Only you can answer that, only you.